On behalf of B'nai B'rith, I welcome you who are present at this dinner, as well as you who are la radio listeners throughout the United States and elsewhere in the world. To help carry out the program for the protection of human rights, the Nabrith has urged on the United Nations a modest two-point proposal. First, first, the United Nations should ask each member state to establish a National Commission on Human Rights. Second, the United Nations should establish fact-finding commissions to provide for worldwide surveys regarding the observance and protection of human rights. We believe that a most effective means to eliminate undesirable conditions is continually to expose the facts in responsible forms. I am privileged to present one who has been aptly described as the world's first citizen, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Trigby Lee. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, very happy that I accepted your invitation to speak at the Triennial Convention of Benaith Brief. I feel it is especially appropriate for the Secretary General of the United Nations to talk with the members of an organization that is working for better human relations and is helping to make the community a better place in which to live. International peace and security, friendly relations, respect for equal rights, self-determination, human rights, and fundamental freedom for all, without distinction as to race, sex, language, and religion, harmonizing the actions of nations. These words of the United Nations Charter express the most deeply felt desires of peoples all over the world. They are words that express the desires of people of every religious faith, every political belief, every social order, every cultural tradition, and every stage of economic development from the most backward to the most advanced. The human rights provisions of the United Nations Charter were greatly strengthened in San Francisco by the influence of non-governmental organizations like the Brit to where there is consultants or observers. Give and take 
by both sides. What we need, what the world needs, is a 20-year program to win peace through the United Nations. I believe that most people everywhere in the world will join me in the desire and hope that the member governments of the United Nations will make renewed efforts to get together on the first steps of such a United Nations peace program without delay. Before a distinguished audience, including Senator Herbert Lehman, Secretary of Agriculture Charles Brennan, Secretary of Interior Oscar Chapman, Attorney General J. Howard McGrath, Associate Justice Tom Clark, among others, Vice President Albin Barkley lauded Eddie Jacobson for his contributions to world jury. Said Mr. Barkley in part, All of his life, he has devoted himself to good works and to worthy causes. Eddie Jacobson has been active in B'nai B'rith, giving of his time and of his energy in the great cause of brotherhood represented by this great organization. In order that he might bring home to his own people and to all the peoples of America the real need of those hundreds of thousands of unfortunates who have found a home in the new state of Israel. He visited Israel itself. Then Mr. Barclay continued, He has been a lifelong friend of President Truman. Fought by his side in Europe in the First World War, and was associated in business with him for a time after the termination of the war. And it was extremely appropriate also that the President should have the President and Secretary of B'nai B'rith with him at the time he signed this announcement of the recognition of the State of Israel. We do not ordinarily bank too much on ancestry in this country where we believe in the equality of men, the 
without regard to race, religion, or color, or national origin. And yet we do place some store by the long and outstanding record of groups of men as well as individual men. We do brag uh, about our ancestors and properly so, because just as in horses and in other forms of animal life, blood undoubtedly tells among human beings. We are justly proud of its ancestry, of its origin, and of its great record. The B'nai B'rith, which has for 107 years, in the United States of America and wherever else its influence might be felt, sought to break down the barriers of bigotry and intolerance and hatred and to teach the brotherhood of man that men of different origin, of different ancestry and different background, of different religious beliefs, different political uh, affiliations, different economic status, they live together as neighbors and as friends and as Americans. I congratulate the B'nai B'rith not only on its antiquity of origin, not only upon the 350,000 members which honor its rostra and honor it because through its influence it has helped to break down the barriers of misunderstanding, of intolerance, of bigotry and hatred. And therefore, I am sincere when I say that I hope that in the years to come it may not only grow in numbers but that it may grow in influence and power among all the peoples, not only of Jewish distinction, but all the people in this great country and all the people of the world. We have tried to express our affection in this service award, which the Executive Committee has bestowed upon you. I now read the Supreme Lodge of B'nai B'rith in Triennial Convention Assembly on this 21st day of March 1950 honors Edward Jacobson, distinguished member of B'nai B'rith, exemplary citizen, devoted American and noble Jew. He has time and again with modesty, forbearance, and other selflessness rendered services to his people of such high order that history alone will take their full measure. 